Hey, everybody, it's Jeff Gersman. <laughs> I'm here with you. And I brought some guests here uh, from our, uh, our friends at Disney here. We've got John Vignocchi. Hi. And, uh, and Mike Schneider. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Hey, it's good to meet you. I've heard a lot of great things about you. Oh, and, well. Uh, and this, this website, uh, the, the Giant Bomb. Well, we're, we're very excited about it. And we're, uh, we're very excited about this, uh, this product you've brought here. Disney's Infinite Bio, Bio uh, Disney's no. Infinity. <laughs> Can't imagine when I heard the name of that. I was I like, bet, Oh yeah. no! <laughs> so let's talk about the time when you named your Star Wars the Old Republic character after <laughs> the project you were working on. So it's first of all not Disney's, it's Disney 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 Infinity. Infinity. Sorry, that's yes. Or just Infinity. Just Infinity. <laughs> Disney's Disney just Infinity. Disney Inf Yeah. All right. Now you confuse me. I'm going to start sweating. How has it been? I mean, so this has been like your life for a totally a, has a, been a real and, long time. You know, it's now. like we talk on Twitter all the time, right? So I've always been like, I'm working on something so cool, I can't wait to talk about. It. And you know how difficult it is for me to yeah. keep a secret. So uh, it's nice to finally be able to openly talk about it. Although, as you know, prior to even having this conversation. Our PR people were like, don't say this, don't say that, don't talk about this character or that character or this property. <laughs> well, I imagine so that must be, I mean, when you're dealing with, I mean, this, this is like one of the most difficult things to do, I imagine. Even though it's all Disney, at some point, bringing all these different elements from all these different universes, Pirates of the Caribbean and The Incredibles and all this different stuff, I imagine that just getting that together must be a huge part of this project. It's a right? huge, yeah, it's a, it was a huge part of the project. It was a, it was a, a, a great challenge, but also it was a ton of fun. So mm -hmm. the guys that are putting together the software is uh, Avalanche Software yeah. in Salt Lake City. And you're like out there all the time. Yeah, uh, not to be confused with the other Avalanche, right. which by the way named their studio after Avalanche and Salt Lake City already had the name. So there you go guys, a little bit of, but, there's always beef with the <laughs> Salt Lake right. City guys like, we named our studio we first. Avalanche first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but your games don't have stunt positions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the guys at Avalanche Salt Lake City um, have a great relationship with Pixar. Mm -hmm. um, so right out the gate when we started working on Infinity, you know, got in very close with Pixar. And then uh, as we started adding additional properties to Infinity, we started talking to the guys at Feature Animation, obviously with Jerry and other filmmakers that I can't name because then it would uh, identify the properties that exactly, we haven't yeah. yet yeah, announced. There's all there. kinds of stuff <laughs> coming, there. right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, but, but it's you, it's been fun. It's been fun. Cool. So, th so you've got you know toys that you put on a platform and they appear in the game. I feel like I may have seen something along these lines before. And I know but you've never seen it like this. I've never seen it like this. So the deal is, okay, so you're calling out T Skylanders. Talk to me. What are your what's your so, differentiator? Yeah, so what are the pillars? So, so let me just say first thing. Um, that's a great game. And no, you and I, I, you no, and I, I know you play, like, yeah, yeah, we exactly. were both that's like, it. oh my god. And so we were working on this as we were going through that. Uh, as that had come out, but the deal is, you know, between the interactive game pieces and how you know we bring physical to digital, there's similarities there, mm -hmm. but the similarities stop there. Uh, when you take a look at, at the software, which is really the most important part, you know, we are an open world game. Uh, uh -huh. All of our different play sets are open world games, and then we have this toy box mode, which we'll get into here in a little bit, that allows you to create and build the world however you want to using mm -hmm. your imagination. Cool. So we have uh, the Incredibles. Uh loaded up here. Why don't we take a look at this? Uh, Mike's going to play so you can speak. I know, okay, that, I know so that's a challenge for you. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I remember that Ballers demo. I remember when you came through here with your flashy sunglasses, talking baller. You left those glasses here, by the way. I know. Actually, I think those were cheapos, weren't they? Yeah, they were. You were like, do you want me to send back they, those they glasses? They are, aren't they? I mean, well, the problem is every time I buy an expensive pair of glasses, I lose good. them, yeah. like instantly. Yeah. Um, so that's why I try to wear them on my head, so at least I know where they are. That's that's a smart move. Um, anyway, so we're inside the Incredibles playset right now. Mm -hmm. So every one of the playsets within Disney Infinity, about six to seven hour uh, of, of story missions, uh -huh. about ten hours for... Careful, and punch that guy in the face there, Schneider. <laughs> about ten hours of... Um, uh, for, like, if you want to do all the side missions and collect everything that there is. The big thing with Infinity is that every one of these playsets, from a game mechanic standpoint, is totally different. So inside of the Incredibles playset, this one's a lot about melee combat inside uh -huh. of a, a city, uh, city world. So we're inside Metroville right now, but you'll see that with these other playsets, like for example, Pirates of the Caribbean, that one's all about, you know, obviously exploring the Caribbean on ships, so uh -huh. a lot about sailing, but we also have uh, sword combat in there and flintlock pistols. 
Uh, and the, it's, it's all still mix and match, right? I, I can bring the Incredibles into Pirates of the Caribbean, and that's sort of so, stuff, or is that, is that, yeah, we'll get so, into that toy box. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So right. uh, inside of the play sets, these are true to property experiences, Got meaning it. that you only can play as characters On from brand. that pro Well, <laughs> the thing is this, actually, what it comes down to is that their Disney fans are super precious about their favorite Disney film. Sure. And so as cool as it would be to have Mike Wazowski driving, you know, the Black Pearl inside of Pirates of the Caribbean, the thing is it breaks the fiction and it really breaks the story. Mm -hmm. But inside of that toy box mode, that's where you, that's can, where you can mix and match. Like crazy. no holes barred, right? All right? So um all of the, the the visual stylization from an art perspective is that these are all virtual toy versions of the characters. Uh -huh. So even the way like as you're seeing right now Mr. Incredible animates and moves throughout the world is yeah. like an action figure. Yeah. So all the characters actually look like toys and behave like toys. Um, so, oh, so Mikey just uh, finished this complete uh, this first mission here, and so by doing that, he earns uh, spins at the toy maker, which allows him to unlock additional virtual toys inside of the toy box mode. And actually, he's going to head now over to uh, every one of the play sets has a, a toy shop okay. that has uh, all the different virtual toys that are contained within that play set. So we have virtual toys inside play sets, and we have virtual toys that you can unlock in the toy box. So when he accesses this toy shop here, it's actually going to bring up um, all the different toys that you can unlock inside of Incredibles. So the first one we'll do just right away is unlock uh, Mr. Incredible's sports car. So this actually allows you to move around Metroville very, very quickly. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> So now, when you when you get a play set, I'm just trying to think about like have the the figure aspect of it uh, outside a toy box. When you get a play set, you'll have access to everything within that play set without more figures, or is it you know you're going to get like Mr. Incredible, but then there'll be other Incredibles figures later that you could bring into this mode. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So. Um, any of the characters from that particular property can go inside of a playset. Okay. Um, now we have a starter pack that's going to come with the Infinity Base. It comes with, uh, which you can see here, kind of at the uh, at the end of the base, uh, we have what we call a landmark piece. Uh -huh. uh, so that landmark piece is needed in order to access the playsets that represent. So when we release expansion packs like Cars, yeah, we're going to have. So we just announced Cars. So we'll have um, the Piston Cup landmark piece. We'll have Lightning McQueen, and then we'll have Holly as well. Uh -huh. And so you'll place this down and then that will give you access to the that's cars the world play set. and then that's the characters exactly are right. characters Got exactly it. and so now uh, Mater and Francesco are available separately uh -huh. so you can pick them up go inside the cars play set or play with them inside of the toy box got it so that's how that's how that works and again I mean so we're talking about 34.99 for um, the cars uh, play set expansion pack and the thing is that um, you know that playset, along with all the playsets in Infinity, like I mentioned, like six to seven hour games, yeah. it's like a solid game that you're getting. Right. I mean, it's not just a few additional levels. I mean, yeah. it's like a real game and new mechanics to the platform. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the look from PR that I'm, <laughs> that I'm rambling. So sure. from, a logistics, <laughs> from a logistics perspective, like, is a lot of the stuff on the disc, like, are you, are you going to allow more content to be downloaded? Because this seems like a, a, you know, the name implies you could expand upon this, and certainly Disney has the catalog. Yeah. Uh, that you could be working on this forever. I yeah. Mean, is, is this something where you're, you're kind of constantly looking at, like, okay, we're going to be expanding on Infinity for a long time, or at some point he's like, hey, here's Infinity 2, it's going to be this yeah, sort of Yeah, so we're, we're currently looking at um, all, you know, all the ways that we can deliver content with Infinity in the future. Mm -hmm. As it stands right now, though, that starter pack comes with Mr. Incredible, uh, Jack Sparrow, Sully, the uh, the landmark that represents those three play sets. So over 20 hours worth of game there. Yeah. Plus the toy box mode, which is you know a uh, huge value there. Mm -hmm. So um, there's actually we believe like a lot of a lot of content that we're offering consumers. Yeah. Now the hope is that um, and the plan is that Infinity is a platform. So over time, uh, as we as we take a look at all the different priorities around the company, like the latest and greatest cool TV shows coming from Disney XD, or the coolest things that are coming from, uh, you know, the creative geniuses at Pixar, mm -hmm. or you know, even you know the latest stuff that that Jerry's working on, or any of the filmmakers that we yeah, work yeah. with, that we can create additional um, interactive game pieces and play sets that can plug into mm -hmm. the platform. And at some point, I mean, obviously, you know, this is this is far flung future, I'm sure. But you, you guys got all that Lucas stuff. <laughs> maybe it's maybe someday. Yeah. So uh, we're not talking about that. So right we now, well right? we That's yeah <laughs> we'd love we'd love to do it. Um, I my dream is to uh, is to do a Guybrush Threepwood. 
um, character. Yeah. So I think it'd be awesome to have uh, Guybrush and uh, Jack meet. Huge commercial the potential for that Guybrush three point well, thing, man. Yeah, good. So <laughs> I always, yeah, it's when we were actually talking about some of the characters for Infinity One. So I'm a huge fan. You know, so we really battle all the time about you know what characters we should do, what properties should we support, et cetera, et cetera. And I was all over Captain Neo. I was like, yep. we got to do Captain EO <laughs> in terms of abilities. You can shoot rainbows, and that's awesome. And, and then we went to corporate brand. They're like, yeah, so that's George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, and the Jackson Estate. No problem. <laughs> yeah, they're like, Vinyaki, you can go and try to get that approved. <laughs> so, um, but it's cool because Disney is the you know, largest entertainment company in the world, and we have this huge treasure chest of IP. Right. So you're actually going to see a ton of this stuff in, inside of Infinity. You know, we can support IPs around Disney now using the Infinity platform with interactive characters if we want, with play sets, even if we want to do smaller things like um, power discs or we want to do uh, different virtual toys that you can mm. play with. There's just so much gameplay potential yeah. there with all the different properties. So let's, let's, let's talk about the, the power disc. Is that something that ties into toy box mode? Should we get Oh yeah, you know what we didn't do actually? Here. So we've been we're showing a lot of, uh, sorry about that. Schneider, you should change these because okay. I'll, I'll ramble and not pay attention here. Um, okay, so you can switch on the fly. Yeah, okay. you can switch on the fly. So we're uh, two-player simultaneous split screen, uh, and then we'll go four-player simultaneous uh, online. Oh, wow. So Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, even on Wii U, we're going to be mm. online. So you can play four players inside of the play sets running around, and you can play four players inside of the toy box, which is a ton of fun when you start getting the creativity and the imaginations of you and three of your friends. Yeah, that's cool. Stuff that you can build. Right. So back to the Incredibles play set. Yeah, we showed you a little bit of dash. He obviously has super speed. Uh, he does light damage, but he can move very, very quickly between mm. targets. So I'll pull him off and put on uh, Mrs. Incredible. So um, every one of the characters, not only in The Incredibles, but also across Infinity, have different powers and different abilities, mm -hmm. make them special and collectible. Um, they also come with adventures inside of the toy box. So these are small mini games that when you're in the toy box and you put down a character, it actually launches into an adventure, which is uh, you know about a 20 minute experience. Oh, cool. Where, so it's like additional value, yeah. right? You get a cool character you can play with, you get a character mm -hmm. that goes into a play set, and you also get these adventures in the toy are box. Are these characters leveling up, all, uh, leveling up at all? Are you storing anything back on the toys? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, all, the char all the toys have uh, memory inside of them. Characters do level up, um, and then based on your character's level, that is how many spins you can get at the toy maker. Got it. They have a max level of level 15, um, and they are platform agnostic. So if you have an Xbox 360, and I've got a PlayStation 3, or Adam has a PlayStation 3. <laughs> Why would Adam have a PlayStation 3? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can bring it over to your, to your friend's house. Even the 3DS version, you know, all the characters work across platform cool. that way. Same uh, base for 3DS, or is that a, a smaller kind of one-figure base? Yeah, or, so yeah. it's exactly. It's a one-figure yeah. base primarily because um, it's it's not split-screen. Right. So since we do couch co-op, we actually do split-screen. So uh, uh, you can run in each direction that you want to go. Cool. Um, and then we're showing Violet right now, who's wicked awesome in terms of a character. So she has the ability to go invisible, uh, but then we also worked with Pixar to expand um, the things that she can do. So you know in the film, right, she has her uh, force field ability, mm -hmm. but the idea is that she's a little bit older inside of, uh, inside of the, the Incredibles playset, and she's now learned how to use her projectile as uh, a mid-range attack. Well, that seems like a good time to, to get toy box loaded up and we kind of yeah, show some of this uh, other mix of stuff. So, so let's... You know, let's let's talk about the, the Disney franchises that that I connect with the most here. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. I mean, everyone has their favorite. So, what's yours? It's Tron. Yeah, uh, me too. It's always it's always I been have, Tron. I have a little. It's only been Tron. I have a little soft spot for for Tron myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got all thousand points in that Tron game. I did. Game. Actually, it's embarrassing when I log on to Xbox Live and look at your achievements, which are. Ridiculously high. You know how that whole thing started. And see that you have uh, you have more achievements in Tron than I do. Is is and I worked on it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's then you know better than to get all the achievements in Tron. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was a dig. Why? <laughs> you and Adam had been talking about like, oh, we're gonna have a, and, and I think Lang. We're talking, we're gonna have a Chiba oh, Tron when Tron comes out, race to a thousand, and and I never said anything. I just said like. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get it you, for <laughs> all those guys. That's right. You quietly went in and did it. And then none of you bothered to actually complete the task. It was. So. Well, here's the thing. Like, as a developer, right, you run into that. You run into that thing where it's like, I've played this game so much. When the when the retail oh, yeah, version totally, comes out, you're yeah. like, 
Sweet, put it I mean, on my shelf and, you dude, know. believe me, like, I played it on a re on a debug first. Right. And then went out and bought a retail to do it all again. I didn't send you one? So, it, it, they showed up later. It was, yeah. you know, it's kind of... Sorry. Right. You we know what? Infinity will not show up late. <laughs> <laughs> I went out and bought one, and then the one with the light cycle showed up afterwards. That's what it was. With the movie ticket. Uh, you know, but DVD. I knew I had to jump on that to beat you guys, and it turned out none of you were actually serious about getting those achievements. <laughs> and that was that, and that was the day that achievements died for me. The day <laughs> the achievements died. Yeah. We're in the toy box. Okay. Did we, fin we didn't so. finish our private discussion. So Tron, but what else? That's, that's more or less it. Okay. Um, DuckTales, Woo! Like, in terms of the game, which uh, we should talk about. How much? Speaking of which, check this out. So we're inside the toy box. Uh -huh. By the way, this is a toy box that we built. This is our toy box. Yeah. Your toy box can be anything. Um, Mikey, oh, so you can set like the the visual theme of it and, yeah, and yeah. what's there and stuff. Mikey's playing a syndrome right now, so all the characters have different abilities. Syndrome has his zero point energy, which actually allows him to grab onto objects in the environment, manipulate and throw them. But Mikey, look up in the air there. Speaking of Ducktales, we got Scrooge McDuck's money nice. bin. Nice. So that's one of the virtual toys you can unlock inside of the toy box. We've also got so that Epcot you know, Center. That's back exactly there? What real it nice, is, right? Can Cin I ride Space Mountain somewhere? Um, is it? Uh, wait, so hold on, Cinderella's Castle. Okay. Um, you know, buildings from Wreck-It Ralph there in the yeah. background as well, the 8-bit buildings. So there's tons and tons of uh, of fun content that you can play with. Make your toy box whatever you want. Mm. So um, now this is this is kind of built out. Now Avalanche did that uh, that Toy Story game that had a toy box mode. Is this kind of like that blown out to extreme? Totally blown out to the extreme. So. One thing is that, like when we showed you in Incredibles, you could unlock Mr. Incredible's sports car. The thing is that as you play through each of these playsets, you're unlocking virtual toys, completing quests, defeating bad guys, that kind of thing. Any of your characters then can equip any of those virtual toys. So he's got Syndrome there using the hoverboard from the Incredibles and the pirate grenades that mm -hmm. came from Pirates of the Caribbean. This one now, he's on that same hoverboard, but he's got the toilet paper launcher Naturally. from Monsters University. Yeah. So that particular virtual toy you use to TP fraternity and sorority houses in Monsters U. Uh, <laughs> but Syndrome can have that. Um, there's the uh, it's a paintball gun, which is a lot of fun because it actually We does... almost toilet papered uh, Ryan's house not too long ago. Really? After a particularly long night of drinking. That was, uh, sounded <laughs> like a great idea. <laughs> We're going to go TP Ryan's house. That does sound like a great idea. Instead, we passed out. <laughs> show, some the, show some of the other stuff, Mikey. So we've got like, uh, yeah, that's always a, a fan favorite. So Syndrome with Buzz Lightyear's jetpack. Nice. So there's over a thousand different virtual toys uh, inside of Infinity, mm -hmm. and you know the combinations that you can have are in like the hundreds of thousands. Is that something that you know you, you'll kind of unlock more of those as you acquire the different play sets? That's exactly right. And then also there's a lot of them that are just available inside of the toy maker. Okay. So um, Mike is actually right now on. Uh, we created a toy nice. version of Matterhorn. Um, so if you've ridden the Matterhorn yeah. at Disneyland, and we actually have these rails that you can grind off of, and so it's actually a ton of fun because you can then continue building those rail grinds around and mm -hmm. actually make like your own roller coaster if you want. That's to. cool. So if you want to make like a version of Screaming California, you yeah. can do that. Um, there's a couple other things inside of here, like uh, turn around. Yeah, we've got stadiums which are uh, all ESPN, uh, which is super oh, cool, sure, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just cool. So I mean, like a Chris Berman figure that I can plop <laughs> down. And... Perhaps uh, over there, show us. That's Pride not Rock. That's what makes me laugh too. Like, remember Rafiki holding up Simba in the Lion King? Yeah. Right. So we have like a toy version of that. I mean, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing. You know, I, I assume there's like people be some... recreating oh, scenes yeah, like, with like you know, Mr. Incredible holding characters. Dash. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. And the different types of combinations that you can have. So when you've got uh, toy box mode here, are there kind of objectives and other things that come along with this, or is this just straight up free form? It's actually up to you. So we have um, what we call adventures inside of the toy box. Uh -huh. So characters themselves can go on adventures, but then also there are adventures that teach you about building, teach you about driving, teach you about kind of the core mechanics of the game. So if players want to go on those adventures, they can do that. They gain experience and economy for doing that, so they can then go and unlock additional virtual toys. Mm. Um, but a few other things you can do inside of here, speaking of the, the building stuff, uh, if Mikey goes and grabs uh, Cinderella's wand, or I'm sorry, uh, it's the Fairy Godmother's wand, <coughs> that actually allows you to edit and customize the world in a variety of different ways. So. Um, you know, just like in um, Cinderella, right, you've got uh, Fairy Godmother could kind of do anything. So yeah, we yeah. thought that that would be a fun way to, to allow players to explore kind of editing the world. So by holding down the left trigger, when you have the uh, wand um, equipped, 
it actually can then select different areas inside of the toy box mode itself. So um, you can go and like very easily, if you look in the lower right-hand corner there, you can delete by hitting the B button yeah. very, very simply. Um, you can hit the A button if you want to, to then modify that. So Mike can actually take this particular um, bridge that we've done here. Mm -hmm. He can put down uh, additional ones if you want to keep building the bridge. He can rotate it. He can pull it, you know, far down. Like if you want to make like a secret lava bridge, you know, exploring an underground volcano, you could do that. He could raise it way high up in the air if he wants to and create, you know, Sleeping Beauty's castle floating up in the sky. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of different things that you can do just with that simple building interface. So you're saying that with Infinity, I could build a sky city and out infinite Bioshock. You could actually, because we have the rails, right? Yeah. So you could actually create. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about You've that. You've got that whole game inside of this game. What <laughs> boom, are they going to do? Boom, son. <laughs> got you, Ken Levine. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that would be cool. Actually, I hope to see something like that. But um, actually, don't show this for me. We hit back. Um, so one thing that you can do is you can actually modify all the textures in the world as well. So like there are pieces of the ground that you can modify to be themed to different Disney properties. Again, you're unlocking these as you keep playing through the game. Um, okay. But the one yeah. thing that I do want to show now actually is the power disks. So um, the power disks... Yeah, these almost look like little coasters or something almost. Co like, I was thinking like, more... Yeah, like very tiny poker chips. Yeah, poker, right. yeah, yeah, poker cool. chips, sure. Um, so... Uh, the power discs do a variety of different things. So we have certain power discs that modify characters' abilities. We have certain power discs that bring new virtual toys inside of the toy box. So let me explain a little bit how they work. Um, first of all, these will come in blind packs, like trading cards. Oh, wow. Okay. So we've got three waves of power discs coming out. There's going to be over 60 in total. Um, the circular ones modify your character's ability. The hexagonal ones uh, actually will uh, bring new toys that you can play with and change your entire world. So uh, if Mike can, um, uh, real quick, so right now, caveat, right? Obviously, we're in development, sure, so yeah. lots of bugs all over the place, but I know people have uh, seen this kind of stuff, syndrome yeah. slipping through the world here. <laughs> anyway, so just to, to go on to this, what's cool is that um, the, the circular ones will do things like, this is the, uh, I'll hold it up for the camera, this is the uh, Jack Sparrow Pirate's Booty yeah. uh, power disc. So this particular power disc uh, actually will give your character an additional 20%, uh, or I'm sorry, 8% economy gain uh, inside of uh, a playset or inside of the toy box. Uh, this particular power disc is, uh, represents Sparky's health from Frankenweenie. Mm. So this will actually give your character more health. So what you do is you take okay, this so power disc and you actually stack it underneath the character. Oh, whoa. And right. then now Syndrome appears inside of the toy box or inside of a playset with 20% more health. Um, or you can take a circular one, or, or, or sorry, the Pirate's Booty one, put that down, and now you've got an economy boost. So if yeah. you actually All run right. into trouble in a playset where you're kind of having difficulty right. getting past a certain you've mission, you can yeah, you can go out and grab a power disc pack to, to kind of power up your character yeah. to make it through. So you can stack two of the circular power discs underneath a character. And one thing that's kind of cool that the guys at Avalanche did was, uh, and we're just talking about now, is uh, we have an a alchemy system that we've put into these. Mm -hmm. So basically combinations of the circular discs will also reveal a third buff. So oh, for wow. example, okay. if I take the Jack Sparrow Pirate's Booty and I take uh, the, the Sparky's Health, not only do I get the two buffs there on the right side of the screen, but now I also get a plus 3% like health, health regen. regen. Yeah. So um, it's kind of cool because, you know, the hope is that kids are going to be going back and forth and saying like, okay, you know, this one does this, and when you combine these right. two together, it has this effect. And so as time or they'll goes... go on the internet and look at the chart that someone has right. made. Oh, and yeah. go, like, oh, or they'll yeah. go on to Here's game FAQs the, yeah, and yeah, see like, who's figured to, the whole thing out. get these. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun since the power discs are being released in waves, you know? Yeah. The thing is yeah. that as new ones come out, they're going to yield... You'll try the old ones yeah, and get, exactly. get new combos exactly. and stuff like that. So that's, that's cool. And, and these things look small enough that... that oh, jeez. So just, just throw them around. Just toss them, whatever. Just whatever. <laughs> Durable, though. Disney product. Yeah. Um, not a choking hazard. <laughs> not very a, smart. Not a choking hazard. Um, six plus. These seem like the sort of things that, like, you know, if, if you guys wanted to get into all kinds of other stuff, you could pack these in with other games you were releasing or, yeah, or boxes with of cereal. Blu ray you know, or, or, or yeah, all yeah. kinds of yeah. crazy stuff. It's, so. And it's also a great opportunity, like, to support properties. I mean, you know, even though we don't have a uh, playset based on a specific property, we can have, you know, a power disc that represents that. So sure. fans of that can still enjoy Disney content content on the Infinity platform with that. So um, just to show you some kind of cool stuff, um, 
we also have these power disks that change the entire world. So yeah. these ones actually represent, uh, sorry, I'm like holding it. This represents Nightmare Before Christmas. So this is the sky, and then this is the ground. So when I place these down on the hexagonal section where, where the uh, landmark would typically go, it prompts me inside of the game if I want to change the entire world to be themed to Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh. So now all of the ground textures become themed to Tim's movie, all of the trees, Right, yeah. actually changed to be themed to Nightmare Before Christmas. So cool. the leafless tree, uh, that kind of thing. If I put down the sky, can change the entire sky now to also mm -hmm. be themed to Nightmare Before Christmas. So very, very easily, my toy box has been completely transformed into Nightmare Before Christmas. Even the roads and stuff now become themed to Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, the water becomes like uh, you know the green goo that you see in the film. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a ton of fun. Um, so that's an example of of how those power yeah. this work. Um, there is. Oh, let's, let's see. Let's see one one more set here, and then we should probably wrap it up. It's. Well, are you not having fun? Uh, that's you know. I'm. Just, you guys got tons of appointments. This is a busy week for you guys. I'm, I'm thinking of you. As I told. I'm as of I you. told Michelle, this is the giant bomb. <laughs> long time fan. I I think it's important that we spend the right amount of time showing this to the guys. All so. right. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so I, I threw down the Tron stuff so that you nice. could see that as well. So Tron is another one of the complete yeah. customizations. So now you've got, I mean, this is like the ultimate mashup, right? You've got Syndrome flying around with Buzz Lightyear's jetpack in a virtual version of the grid with, it looks like you're using the blaster from the Toy Story Midway Mania ride at Disneyland. So um, that's cool. Yeah. Show, uh, show the little flying vehicle. And then if you've got four players in here, they could, you know, they've got their own characters mixed in with with their own. Yeah, and so that's one thing. Base yeah, that's one thing that's tough. Online. That's tough to see right here is that, um, you know, since this is a multiplayer game, you can create and customize your toy box however you want to. Right. But then you can bring three uh, of your friends inside of here, and so they can build at the same time as as you. So yeah. you can start building, you know, one part of a racetrack. I can do the middle. Mm -hmm. Ryan can do the end, and then we can create and, kind and of the can, ultimate. Can race they track. build stuff with the stuff that they've unlocked? If you, even if you haven't unlocked it? It's actually, it depends on uh, whose toy box we're okay, in. We actually it. use that person's toy yeah. box. Um, well, you've got a sweet recognizer, so I'm on board. Yeah, and then I'm gonna show you one last thing here, and then we will wrap it. So we head into the stadium. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of physics glitch there. Um, Those things are always hard to steer. <laughs> that's, that's canon right there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so a variety of different things. Um, we've got like, if you remember, we also have power discs that do like uh, bring in new toys to play with. Like this one's a gas. If you remember in Aladdin, uh, that scene when the genie turns Abu into an elephant. Yeah. So we actually have him as an elephant, so you can ride him if you want to. And uh, if you uh, goo him large, will you? Just, just riding around, just dumping on fools with that gun. Dumping on fools. Well, you could see this is the thing: is you could create a race mm -hmm. and then do an elephant race if you wanted to. Nice. Um, and then we've got this Whoa. this goo grower and goo shrinker that'll actually quadruple the size of things. So not only virtual toys, but yeah. also characters as well to make them huge. Wow. Um, right. So that's a lot of fun. The last thing that we're gonna we're gonna uh, show you. There's so much inside of here. Um, <laughs> it's it's worth another. And visit. you, I mean, you have there's there's a ton of stuff that hasn't even been announced yet, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, in terms of properties and even functionality. That's ridiculous. Um, so we're going to show you the Infinitoys. So this is, uh, this is actually where we think we're going to have a lot of fun. So if uh, Mikey um, uses the Fairy Godmother's wand, he can actually link logic uh, between virtual toys. Yeah. So for instance, he's putting down a pressure plate right here. And then if he moves over to, it's like this party cannon, um, he can actually select the pressure plate and then link it to the function of the party cannon. So, you know, he has syndrome, right? There's now in the, in the lower right hand corner, there's the gear sign. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at, okay, so here's the functions of the pressure plate. Right. Stepped on, stepped off of. So when I step on it, now I'm going to link that logic to the party cannon. Party cannon says, hey, here's the things I can do. So we'll say, we'll set off the grand finale. So now, very, very simply, right? Yeah. We have basically, you know, introduced programming to kids, like logic nice. programming yeah. to kids. So um, it gets more and more advanced, and there's more and more stuff that you can do. Like, for example, uh, he can set up a soccer game really quickly. So you take the different areas of the stadium there. You can actually create your own stadium. Uh, and then he's going to you know, take one soccer goal there, uh, put another one over there. Um, there's even a scoreboard toy, so you can keep score. Nice. Um, and so there's so many different things that you can do with these logic toys. We've got like health bars that you can associate to characters. We've got uh, timers inside of there. Uh, we have race gates. So if you want to create your own like races, we can race do that. And exactly. Okay, yeah. um, and you can even modify the camera. So if you want to have the camera kind of looking down mm -hmm. and do like a, a top down, like someone the other day recreated Super Off-Road. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, and so it was like Mr. Incredible in Barbie's Corvette, right, racing against <laughs> um, Syndrome in, uh, in one of our stunt buggies, but actually went and recreated that top-down version of Super Off-Road. Mm. The stuff that the guys in QA are making, and of course the, the, the geniuses at Avalanche, is hysterical. I That's mean, awesome. they just, I saw Gauntlet, I've seen um, Bowser's Castle from, uh, from Mario Kart. Well, naturally, that's yeah. the, them's, them's the rules. <laughs> oh, as soon as you've got user different. creation tools, someone's got to make 1-1 uh, from Super Mario Brothers, uh, right? That's yeah, right. actually, I've seen that. <laughs> All right, there you go. I saw that as well, except with jetpacks, which yeah. is kind of cool. That's the earliest implementation then, yeah. right? Okay, well. So, last thing is, I'm getting, this, I'm getting <laughs> the signal. No more talking? All right. All right. Bye. It's a cool game, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> just pull the wind out of my sails. When's, when's it actually? out that just that just changed recently uh, right? it did just change so um, we are going to be out August 18th okay. uh, in North America doing a kind of fun midnight launch thing and then August Kids can't stay up that late why would you do midnight launch? <laughs> for infinity for Disney they can <laughs> right. uh, no we just, we thought that that would be a lot of fun to do and then uh, uh, August 20th the uh, rest of the world so all right Johnny it's looking cool glad to have finally seen it for myself I'm actually yeah. good to see you I'm gonna leave you with uh, with a toy you what? get to you get to choose one yeah all right oh geez I come bearing gifts, Jeff. All right, well, I'll, I'll just get a closer look at those <laughs> and figure out which, which one the speaks to me. I don't want the pressure of the cameras when I'm choosing these. It's, people well, get that all one. judgy. And that's, yeah, exactly. The comments is like, why would you do that? That's stupid. I'd actually like to see in the comments what figures they would choose or, or properties they'd like to see in Infinity 2 because that's, that's the that's the. Yeah, okay, thing. we'll run your marketing surveys for you. No problem. <laughs> yeah. How much does sure. that cost? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. Good uh, for coming you, by, uh, Absolutely. Mike. Thanks for playing. Thank you. And uh, yeah, looking cool. That's All Infinity. Right. We're signing off. See you guys. Bye.